Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's start with the list of example and tutorial. So these are the subtopics, which is up to 5.8. And this is our task. We have 13 examples to cover. And we have this as the tutorial question. Alright, let's have a look at the book, The Law of Motions, Chapter 5. So overall of this topic, you will find that you will be using something that you have seen earlier in high school. Newton's first law, second law, and Newton's third law. Now, if you can remember a little bit about the law, it's all about talking about the force where correlation between the force and the acceleration, how they are interacted with one another. Now, so you will notice that when we start talking about the concept of force, well, you did force every day, okay? So, for instance, term used by the books here is pushing, right? Pushing, uh, where pull, okay? So, so long that you interact with the object, you interact with the object. By mean in this case is muscular activity, pushing. So you somehow result in the object change of the object's velocity. However, okay, however, observation shows that that force not necessarily would cause motion. Okay, would not be causing motion. For instance, uh, while you are even sitting or standing, you will find that there is a force acting on you, and in this case, it's gravitational force. And yet, you see that your motion here remains stationary. So, uh, a second example here is pushing a large boulder and not able to move it, okay? Or even pushing against a wall and resulting no motion. So, what really happens here is uh, we need to go back to the 1, 2, 3 of the Newton's law to understand what really happens there. Because you did push on the object, you did interact with the object, but here... Uh, you find that, oh, sometimes it does cause motion and sometimes it does not cause motion. So, two statements there, two situations there. Okay. Overall, we can say that or classify that there are two types of uh, forces. Number one, we call it as contact forces and number two, we call it as field forces. Okay, field forces. Now, the term used here, contact, represent that the object and well there should be the physical contact between the object so contact you touch the object now feel here is the other way around it does not involve physical contact between the object right for example the famous example is gravitational force now you might get confused a little bit but remember the idea of the free fall the object is in the air falling and not touching yet the ground but being pulled towards the ground or should I say being pulled towards the center of the earth so you find that there is no interaction contact I should say contact between the earth and the ball or the object that's flying but yet the ball or the object pulled towards the earth now so therefore gravitational force is considered as force. Now, um, a few things to note as well, the basic concept here, right? So, gravitational force, electromagnetic force, strong forces between atomic particles, or subatomic particles, and weak forces that arise from certain radioactive decay process. So, these are known as fundamental, fundamental. Right. Let's see examples in figure 5.1, pulling against, pulling away, uh, pulling on a spring, consider as contact force. You can see that there are contact between the two objects. Okay. Pulling a wagon here okay. while hitting a ball, while hitting a ball, an American uh, ball. And the field force here. Okay. Between them, they are not touching, but yet they experience. Remember magnetic field? So, yeah, 
you are looking at one here for F magnetic field. So magnetic force. So so long the object is within the field itself, then it will experience the force within the field itself. Um, I, an example that you might understand better in this question is the gravitational force again. If you tend to being thrown out of the earth, okay, to a certain extent, extent, then you will find that you are unable to come back to the earth. Why? Because you are now outside of the earth field gravitational. Alright, let's look at 5.2 Newton's first law. Okay, what is Newton's first law? So if you remember in high school, you relate with the idea of inertia, the law of inertia. So if you recall, uh, an object that stays in motion will remain in motion. Okay, but if it's at rest, then it will remain at rest. And for this statement, okay, a more practical statement of Newton's law in the absence of external forces, when viewed from initial frame, an object, this is the keywords of this subtopic, an object will remain at rest and object in motion will continue in motion with that constant velocity meaning that it will stay as it is it resists changes okay it resists changes and when this happen it will result in the acceleration of the object to be zero to be zero but when we do the analysis we have to do a certain version we have to put a baseline that the object is isolated that it does not act with the other environment so for that version we are going to look at the exercise later now um, a proper one coming from the book is as given such but don't worry if you were asked to jot down what is Newton's first law it's just okay to put it in this version now when are we going to use Newton's first law when the object is stationary. So after this, when the object is stationary or we call it in equilibrium, we will turn into this statement and we are going to state that expression that A now will turn out to be zero. And you have seen this idea previously when? When in the previous topic where or previous chapter where when the statement says that object is at constant V or object does not have an acceleration. All right. Now, another thing to note is that uh, the idea of mass, the idea of mass, okay, when uh, what is a mass, something to ponder, mass is a property. What is a property? Property is C5 of an object that shows or tell us how much a resistant, how much a resistant. For example, I'm showing you a car being lift up. Now, let's assume that this is you. If you are at the earth, unable to lift a car, then it goes the same way if you go outer space. Why? Because outer space does has less gravitational acceleration. So, you might find that, oh, the weight will be much lesser. However, since the mass is the same so it still resists the same hence you would not be able to find it's that easy to leave the same car so that's the idea so it goes the same with the something from high school whereby if you would like to stop a car as compared to for example an aeroplane which has bigger in mass you'll find that the aeroplane uh, has a larger tendency um, harder to stop so the larger it gets the harder it is to be stopped so that is something from your high school all right now let's have a look at 5.4 newton's second law now first law we say is that net force would be equivalent to zero so we tend to write first law as net force equivalent to zero so this is the first law it's all about a mathematical version. However, when we turn into number 2, Newton's second law, the mathematical version would be, as we do the net force on the object of interest, 
we find that there is a value of acceleration. And because of that, we would tend to write it as net force equivalent to MA. So that is the gist. That is the gist. So look here, right? The expression. Okay. Net force is now, net force is now equivalent to MA. Now, since I mentioned net force, it means that you have to sum up. You have to sum up net. Okay. Sum up the resultant. Okay. Or all the forces. However, recall back the concept of vector. You ensure that you only sum up of the same component. Okay. Y with Y and X with X. And yeah. Z with Z. Alright. A little bit of definition. What is a Newton? So for this one, you will notice that the unit, the unit is Newton. And if you were asked to get the base unit, okay, the base unit, go back to something you have seen earlier that is as well equivalent to MA. And what is mass? Kilogram. What is acceleration? Meter per second squared. So, Newton is equivalent as well in the unit of kilogram meter per second second. Now, turn to page 101, example 5.1, accelerating a hockey puck. A hockey puck having a mass of 0 0.3, slide on a frictionless surface, no friction, horizontal surface, alright, so flat surface. So, similar to your table, on your table, okay, similar, horizon. And two forces strike them, strike it, number one and number two. So, their value are 5 and 8 Newton, respectively, with angle 20 degree below the axis. So, below the axis and F2 is above the axis, alright. Now, uh, the question, you are to calculate magnitudes and the direction of the acceleration. Alright, regarding the direction, let's start with the answer of the direction. So, we are looking at the angle of the combination acceleration. What about magnitude? Magnitude is a value, a single value presented from x and y direction of acceleration. So, a single value. Now, how do we process the info? The technique used in this is what you do, you sum up their acceleration in X and Y separately, asing-asing. Now, according to the figure, X and Y would be such as this, and then divide by mass, then you are arriving with acceleration. Alright, now something to ponder here. Since the angle is neg uh, below positive axis. So, the book used this technique that they substitute together with the negative. Together with the negative. So, we would like to troubleshoot what will be the effect when you do it with a negative. You will find that cos 20, cos 20 is a value where a positive value of 0 0.9397. Okay. However, the sign negative 20 will give you a product of 5 times, sorry, 5, negative of 0 0.342. Okay, so question rise is why, 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 alright. Now, so if you follow the answer scheme, the answers here, you will arrive with this answer and then finally go back to the trigonometry trigonometry and combine them getting with this single answer. However, I'm here to help you out to understand more on how did this is possible that is negative. Aside that understanding, this is a mathematical version. And for that, let's have a look. Now, shown here is F1. So, what we are going to do, we are going to open F1 and F2 to its component. So, I'm going to sketch the nearest x and the nearest y. Okay, so this is f1, f1. However, this is on x axis. So, it's a component belonging to the x component and this is belonging to the y component. 
How about F2? This is F2. The nearest X is directed to the right. So F2. And the nearest Y is directed upwards. So we're going to complete the labeling. Now notice something that F2, Y and X component are both positive value. Positive value. So look at, I want you to reprocess again these two values, F ik cos 60 and ik sin 60. Indeed, you will arrive a positive value. However, remember just now, we would like to troubleshoot why is it that 5 times cos negative 20 arrive with a negative value. So the calculator had shown the idea of this value, that the direction of F1Y is directed downward. Directed downward. So another method that you can choose to use is rather than writing it as such, you write it from the very beginning. It's a negative F1 sign. However, the writing should be this. 5. Uh, sorry, sorry. This one. No. Uh, it was for Y. So here goes. So we were going to write 5. Sign 20. So this is another technique. So aside as putting angle with negative, you can take out. But with this concept, you need to draw first to understand the direction. Okay. And therefore, from there, you can now get the answer as provided with the book. 5.1 continue. Let's look at what if. This is a very interesting question where rather than 2, there are three hockey sticks that hit or strike the park simultaneously. Two of them similar as the question above. However, they want you to find the third force. So that resulting no acceleration. No acceleration. Maksudnya, all the three forces combined, acceleration dia total is zero. So, what must be component of the third force? Component of the third force. Alright. Now, remember the two forces combined? So, you have um, this and this. Okay. So, when they are combined and you are getting acceleration and such. So, that's exactly what they uh, it portray here. If you are to continue and calculate, you will find that in the x direction, the value is given as 8.7, 8.7 Newton, a positive 8.7 Newton. Dy is a positive value of 5.2 Newton. Double check, eh? I want you to check with your calculator. Will you arrive with this one? 8.7 and 5.2. And hence, in order to have a third force strike and resulting no acceleration, it's also represent that this is the force, net force coming from the example earlier. Net force Y for 1 plus 2 and this is as well 1 plus 2. The third one must be in the opposite direction and equivalent. And that is the reason why if this is 8.7, then this third force in the y direction, sorry, eh, in the x direction is 8.7. Okay. And let's complete this figure first. So you will find that F3 is also 8.7 and F okay, Fy is 5.2 Newton and hence this is must as well be 5.2 Newton but in the opposite direction. So look at their direction. Look at their directions. Okay. So that's how it works. All right. However, technique shown here is uh, what they did is they get the acceleration 29. So this is the acceleration times the mass. So M A. And then this is the same thing. M A. So they arrive with this value and this value. 
Conceptual example 5.2. How much do you weigh in an elevator? Alright, this is a situation where the system is accelerating upwards. So, when it is accelerating upwards, this uh, it says that you feel heavier. Okay, heavier. How do you know? Uh, this time, they, they bring a bathroom scale. Put it inside the elevator with you and you measure your wig. You will notice that your wig is larger than the original. Okay. Now, why? Okay. So, your wig is actually unchanged. However, this experience is because it's not inertia. It's non-inertia. The system is accelerating upwards. Okay. Therefore, to provide the acceleration upwards, the floor or the scale will exert an upward force that's greater in magnitude than your original wig. Therefore, rather than feeling normal with the original wig, okay, you interpret it as being heavier. So, this greater feeling, you interpret like macam getting, eh, beratnya, makin berat. Ah. But in fact, it's because the floor is exerting an upward force, okay? So, we call it normal force here. So, it pushes up on you, not that adding on to your weight, okay? So, in short, measuring your weight must be done while you are at rest not moving or else in this case you'll find that the reading increase now let's turn to our last one newton third's law but before that let's recall and recap newton first law state that um, when an object is stationary will remain stationary or at rest uh, when net acceleration is zero but at the same time acceleration zero reflect that the speed is constant or the velocity is constant. So, so long as velocity is constant, let's consider that acceleration or net force is zero. However, the second one, Newton's second law, indicates that when now object interact with a net force, okay, and that net force is non-zero, tidak kosong. When that happens, you will find that there is MA, an acceleration occurred to the object or object will experience an acceleration. Okay, now how about Newton's third law? Newton's third law overall mentioned about interaction between objects. Okay, now uh, or action and reactions. Action and reaction, all right. You will find that examples here is the force exerted to both objects when they are in contact, when they are in contact, are equivalent in value, except that they are in opposite direction. Okay. Now, so as you can see here, okay, the notation of A, B or 1, 2 represent by A on B. So, it's always on B. B is the object. So, 1, 2, on 2. On 2. 1, 2 is on 2. By who? By number 1. Okay. By number 1, on 2. So, look at the second, uh, the second words. Okay. The second uh, 2 here. Alright. Like this one, it means that on 1. On 1. Alright. Okay. Action and reaction. Okay, like what is shown here is an example of the idea of normal force. That normal force is because action by the gravity. Okay, action by the gravity. And in this case, since the uh, object does not move, uh, we can easily write it in one manner uh, in this version. That mg, okay, downward force, okay, is equivalent to normal force. And gravitational force is equivalent to here, okay? But in conclusion, we can just simplify into this. That normal force 
is equivalent to gravitational force. Is also equivalent to gravitational force, which is FMG. FG, right? Right. Now, Alright, in conceptual example 5.3, you push me and I'll push you, you will find that the idea of Newton's third law being applied. Where in this case, okay, mentioned in the previous idea is the two force are equivalent in value. However, they are in opposite direction. Alright, so what is it? There was this man, a large one and a small boy facing one another. Facing one another. Push against one another on a frictionless surface, frictionless ice. So, there is no external force here. So, they put their hands together and push towards one another so that they move apart. So, that they move apart. Alright. So, let's now choose the direction of the force. Okay. And here. Okay. Now, this force is exerted on two. Okay. Let's give number one and two. So, this is on 2. So, this is on 2. By who? By 1. By 1. Alright. And arrow indicate it's to the right. So, yeah. That's the reason why it's a positive value. Now, how about this one? It's directed to the left. And you will find that if we jot down in terms of the number, it is 2, 1. 2, 1. They are equal in magnitudes but opposite in direction. So, resulting that F12 on 2 will move to the right. So, the boy will eventually move to the right the same direction as the applied force. Logic lah. Kita tolak kanan, dia pergi kanan. Ah, something like that. And that goes the same as F21 on the man. And the man will move to the left. However, the question, who move? Away with higher V. With higher V. Number one, force is equivalent. However, okay, in terms of the V, we are to look at the net acceleration. The net acceleration, remember that force is given as MA. Hence, in order to look at the acceleration, it's inversely proportional with the mass. And in this case, Higher speed correspond to higher acceleration should have with smaller mass. Therefore, those having a smaller mass will experience greater acceleration. Greater acceleration indicates higher velocity. So that's why the little boy. Now the next one. Who move farther while the hands are in contact? While the hands in contact. Because the ball has greater acceleration, greater average velocity, he will move farther than the man. Maknanya man tu besar, berat. Jadi, travelling distance dia akan jadi kurang. Before we proceed with 5.7, Let's go back to the idea of this normal force. Now, if you open up, okay, open up other textbook, you will find that another definition mentioned here describing what is normal force. It's called how hard an object press onto a surface. How hard an object press onto a Object press onto a surface. Therefore, you will find after this, if the object press onto a surface, regardless of the surface, hence there should be a normal force exists in the given figure. Now, another thing to note as well that it says that normal force. Normal represent perpendicular. And with that sense, with that sense, the direction of a normal force is directed out of the surface and perpendicular. So, keywords is the direction, the direction is out of 
surface n 90 degree with the surface normal okay 90 degree with the surface right now let's turn to 5.7 Alright, analysis model using Newton's second law. Okay. Uh, in here, okay, in these sections, we are going to look at models uh, either when the object is in equilibrium or accelerating because of external forces. Because of external forces. So, Newton's first law and second law simultane uh, probably simultaneously. Okay, look at... Uh, Let's now have a look. All right. Uh, before that, okay, before that, we need to introduce you with one particular force. We call it tension. What direction? Direction is parallel to the rope and away from the object. Okay, likewise, this object. Okay, this is the rope. In this case, it's a chain, but uh, it's... Um, almost like a rope okay similar to the behavior of a rope okay when it's taut taut tegang then the experience tension tension okay tension adalah ketegangannya taut okay now tegang right in this sense parallel to it parallel along this there is one particular force and the direction is away from the object so this is the object Away means here. That is how you decide the direction of the tension. Now, here shown as well that we have wake. As long as the object has mass, has mass, therefore it has wake. And the wake is always directed towards center of the earth. Down and center to the earth. Now, in this case, since uh, object is hanging equilibrium, not moving, stationary, okay, at rest, not moving, stationary, we find that we are using Newton's first law. Net force is equivalent to zero. So, what are the force? Look, number one, tension. Number two, gravitational. So, look at their direction. So, tension is upward. That's why it's a positive value. While the gravity is downwards, down, because it's down, okay? And because it's a rise in the y direction, so we jot down as resultant in the y direction. Now, how about x direction? Since there are no forces in the x direction, no forces in the x direction, so net force is equivalent to zero. And in this particular example, we arrive with a conclusion that tension is equivalent to gravitational force. And here, shown that it's not an action-reaction pair because they act on the same object, which in this case is the lamb. Right? So, this portion is to uh, conceptualize that tension is what and direction is what and finally to come to a conclusion that tension is not action reaction why because both act on the same object however okay something that you have learned from high school newton's law at the same times if we have a second object which is the shilling itself you will find that there is force exerted on the shilling, which is tension. However, directed downward, downward. Then it makes sense if let's say, if let's say the ceiling screw just loose, you find that part of the ceiling crumble downwards as if being pulled down. Okay, so the green color acted on the ceiling. The red one acted on the lamp. Which one is our object of interest? In this case, it's the lamp. So, that's the reason why we don't show you the ceiling portion. Analysis model using a particle experiencing a net force. So, when it's experiencing a net force, acceleration ada. So, that's the reason why we jot down as net force equivalent to MA. Now, in this case, consider a crate being pulled to the right, similar as this figure, on a frictionless surface. 
and horizontal flow. So, the flow underneath must have friction. Um, but here we mentioned that it's frictionless. So, we are not going to bother about the friction. So, there was just one single force here because we see that there is a string being taut, tegang. Then, it indicates that there is a tension. There is a force which is a tension. Uh, and there is a surface here. And the surface indicates normal force and gravitational always exists. Eh? Okay, pair. And here, we will open to the X and Y component. This is X, this is Y. Now, according to the figure, there is just a singular, singular, satu sahaja force. And hence, because object move, accelerate, okay, it's experience and acceleration. Therefore, MA. So, that's how we apply Newton's third, uh, second law to this situation. Now, how about in the Y direction? Now, common sense, common sense, no acceleration in the Y direction. You are going to pull it and then all of a sudden the crate just fly upwards. That's impossible. So, common sense tells us that object does not have any motion in the Y direction yeah, and therefore no acceleration. So, it just moves horizontally and therefore in the Y direction, the net force is zero. The Newton first law. And when we simplify, we figure that, oh, the normal force should have the same value as the gravitational force. But only in the opposite direction. Alright, from both example, from this example, then we can conclude that uh, particles can be in equilibrium or we tend to say that net force equivalent to zero. Not necessarily that there is no force, except that all the forces cancel out one another. Similar to the gravity just now. Normal force minus Fg equivalent to zero, but object does not accelerate or move in the y direction. So, it might mean that, that there is no force at all, number one, or the forces are cancelling one another, mean at they give you a net force equivalent to zero, okay? And hand acceleration of zero. So, we write it as, as 5.8. Now, how about if it's experience a net force? Then simple, just add up the force. There is a value of net force, 5 plus 7, okay? So, there is a, a value, okay? A net single value. So, therefore, we find that it will experience a net force and the acceleration can be calculated by using Newton's second law. Now, the discussion above is trying to make our mind or understanding, okay, for the next example here, 5.4, okay, where you will find that there was a traffic light um, being supported by two cables, okay, as such in the figure. And with certain angle as shown here, right now. So, uh, there is a key words of this question where it says that the traffic light is at rest. Now, rational tell us that traffic light don't run away, okay? Or uh, perhaps the worst can happen is it just falls down. In this case, because why falls down? The cable break. So, let's now look at the question, okay? What will happen when it is at rest? Alright, this traffic light weighing 122 Newton hang from a cable tied to another two cables as shown. Now, the two cables are fastened to support. This is the support, okay? The upper cables made angle 37 and 53 degree with the horizontal respectively. These upper cables are not as strong as the vertical cable. These both T1 and T2 are not that strong and will break if the tension in them exceed 100 Newton. 
100 Newton. So the question, does the traffic light remain hanging in this situation or will one of them break apart, break, putus? Jadi, how to do it? What we need to figure out is getting the value of T1, T2, okay? And if T1 and T2 exit 100 Newton, so it will break apart. So it, we can see here the answer is less than 100 Newton. So therefore, it will not break apart, okay? It will not break. But how to do it, okay? Let's start with the first object. In this example, you will find that it's as if we have two objects. The first object is the traffic light itself. Now, so this is the traffic light. Now, uh, onto the traffic light, we are going to draw forces that exerted on it. So this is normal. We find that above it is the string. So only what attached to it saja. Apa yang attached pada dia je. Attached pada dia adalah tali. That's it. So tension, kita akan label sebagai T3 because 1, 2, 3, there are 3 cables and then weak. All right. Now, what to make out of this? It's not moving. It's not moving. So, mathematically, up minus down, T3 minus gravitational equivalent to zero. Our conclusion is T3 is equivalent to gravitational, mg. And in this case, mg is 122 Newton. Now, so 122 Newton. Newton. Right. Now, the second one, Okay, the second one, we can model as if this, the knot ataupun tempat pertemuan dia is a particle ataupun object of interest. Object of interest, kita nak tengok apa. Object of interest yang pertama is the uh, traffic light. The second one is where the meeting of all the forces. Meeting of all the forces. So, here. So, we draw again. Notice that T3 appear once again, concept of Newton third law. So, the first one upward acted on the traffic light, but the second one acted on the knot. Okay, acted on the knot. Not too simple je lah. Okay, on the knot. And clearly, still, the whole system does not move. And that's the reason why we will find that net force on the knot is also zero because object is in equilibrium. The book use equilibrium. But nevertheless, we will find that according to this figure, okay, uh, T3 is directed downward, so we have no objection. This is indicating that the whole T3 is in the y direction but in negative direction. How about T2? It's directed to the right, so T2x. So this will bear a positive value. And T2y is, sorry, T2x is in a positive value. Uh, yeah, T2y is in a positive direction. Okay. How about T1? T1x is in negative direction. Okay, look at the arrow. The nearest x and the nearest y. So, T1, what? Positive value for this one. Let's troubleshoot. Okay. Now, you should see here, T1, x component has a negative value because we open to the nearest x, which is negative. While the weight is negative, okay, and the rest are positive in value. Positive, positive. And only T1Y is, yeah, okay, here we are, okay. So, MG here, okay, let's just, uh, remember just now, 120 Newton, okay. So, this is to be written as negative 122 Newton. This is negative 122 Newton, okay. Understood? It's all about sketching vectors. Sketching what this sketching sketching forces draw the forces and while you are drawing then you will know the direction. So that's the reason when you do the summation for x, okay, for x, you will find that oh it's a negative value together, while y is adding up all these three, okay? And because of that, 
as you simplify, follow suit. Okay. Uh, let's just try a little bit. Okay. Theta 1 is equivalent. Okay. It says that theta 1 is 37. So here is 37 degree. Remember the zigzag you learn in high school. So that makes this 37 as well. And this is 53. And that makes this as 53. Theta 2. So this is 53. This is 37. Eh? And it goes tango with this one to the left. So as you do your substitution as such, eh? try follow suit. So you will find that the expression... Uh, when you are here, should be something like this. Uh, net force equivalent to zero, negative T1. T1 is the unknown. You don't know it. So that's the reason why you remain it as symbol. Cos theta 1. Theta 1 is 37. Plus T2. Another unknown. Cos 53. Now notice as well, the whole expression is equivalent to zero. And you have two unknown, T1 and T2. That's the reason you need another expression. The second expression comes from the Y component. So T1 sine 37 plus T2 sine 53 degree minus this one, 1, 2, 2 equivalent to 0. Now that you have two expressions, the rest are just mathematic. Substitute into one another. Soft, you will arrive with T1 and T2 as given. As given. So since both are less than 100, that's the reason why it would not break.